the story comes from a personal motivation. Um, I had an aunt that was dating someone way younger than she was, about 30 years younger. And then also my father, um, I mean, my mother lost her partner of 26 years. So um, those two together came and they motivated me because I just thought about the fact that when you are in your 60s, you know, late 50s, 60s, early 70s dating, it's a new terrain. It's, a, it's just a totally new terrain. Dating today is not what dating was in the 70s. It's just totally different. And so um, I wanted to kind of draw attention to the fact that, you know, a lot of people out here that are that age are dating, but they're not thinking about the risks that it takes. You know, I grew up in the AIDS generation. I mean, I grew up in the safe sex generation and the safe sex talk. My parents grew up in the free love generation. And, you know, when you got a disease back then, they give you a shot and you went home and it was all okay. But in my generation, if you got something, it was a gift of forevermore. Like, it's a gift that keeps on giving. And so, you know, we were taught to be careful. They weren't really taught that. And so it's a difficult conversation to have with your parents. Being African, you dare not even have that conversation with your parent. You wouldn't even think about having that conversation with your parent. But it is important to do that. So my mother inspired me. My aunt inspired me. Doing research further inspired me because I just realized that so many people just don't think that the sexual life of someone who is over the hill is as important. And I think that it is important. Everyone's life is important. Nobody's decrepit. Nobody is a toss away. Oh, you're in your 60s, go lay down somewhere and die. These people are active. They're living a full life. And I feel like they should live it in a safe way. And it's all about education. That's it. They just need to be educated. Their perspective just needs to change on how they look at sex. My biggest challenge was just finance. It's just really hard to get money, you know, to do the things that you love. And so for me, that was a big challenge. I started in 2012. It was really hard for me to even get as far as I did, you know, and I'm a very prideful person. You know, I'm, I'm African and, you know, we just don't believe in going and asking for help. You know, you are taught to, you know, do it yourself, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and go for it. Uh, you know, my father tells me, I came to this country with a hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's hard for me as a person to go out and, and ask for help. But I knew that I couldn't really do this without a community of people. And let me tell you something. When you do something like this, you find out who your community is. Because even the people that I thought would be helping me, would be open to just help me, were the ones that just turned out to say, well, you know, I'm sorry, but you're on your own. So I begged, I wrote emails, I made phone calls, I wrote letters to people I didn't even know uh, in organizations. And it's funny, a lot of AIDS organizations that I wrote to, no one would even respond to my letter. I mean, only one wrote me a letter saying that they couldn't do it. Um, it's funny, they want to ask for money for their projects, but they wouldn't give money to a person that was trying to prom push the same agenda. So really, that was my biggest challenge. Um, it wasn't like self-doubt or, or fear of it not being done, per se. It was fear of not having financial support. That was my biggest challenge. I knew who I wanted to work with. That wasn't a problem, but it was being able to pay them. I believe that artists should be paid their due. I, I didn't want free work. I wanted to be able to pay people, to hire people to do the job. but. My first film I took out of my 401k to, to do it, but this time around I just couldn't afford to do that. But I couldn't also afford not to tell this story. The big thing now is that we, are, we have submitted to 11 um, different film festivals. So I'm just kind of waiting now to just see who is going to be open to accepting this story as part of their lineup. And so that was my, that's the, it's sort of a waiting game at this point point in time but my big end goal is to really make this 
part of the medical community, if I can have every nursing home in New York City and across America make this part of their orientation process, then I would have done my job. I feel like this should be part of AARP. If you join, you get this in your little packet. If you are going into an assistive living facility, uh, if you're going to a nursing home, this is part of your orientation packet. That's my big, my big goal. But right now, the immediate goal is to be accepted in as many film festivals as possible, get these people, people out there to see this film and to support the cause, which is to stop the deafening silence around HIV and senior citizens out here in the world.